Hi there. Uh, I have relocated to the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> my last video, uh, one of my viewers uh, complained about the sound quality and I can't say I blame him. Uh, basically my office has very little in the way of sound deadening. It, has, uh, it had a very noisy computer running with many, many fans. Uh, and uh, as a result, the sound quality was even worse than this. And that's saying something. Like uh, many other people on uh, photography blogs and on uh, YouTube videos about photography, uh, I find myself in a, I guess you might say, a love-hate relationship with mirrorless cameras. I really like using them. I really like the way they function. I really like the small size. This, for instance, fits easily in a jacket pocket. Uh, in my case, if I'm going to a meeting, it can be with me all the time. Uh, the body cap lens may be very simple, but it will get a decent picture in good light. And most of the time, that's what I'm dealing with. And this particular model, the Olympus EP2, is basically the EP1 rehashed with just a, a port added on the back. So it is truly a first-generation mirrorless camera. Uh, as such, it has all of the focus issues that people relate to the first generation of mirrorless cameras. Uh, as a result, with this body cap lens, I've, I've done away with the autofocus issue, uh, and I have a simple camera that's very rugged, very durable, and like all mirrorless cameras that I am aware of, at least, has absolutely miserable battery life. Okay. Therein lies the rub. These cameras have circuitry that are pretty much always active unless the camera goes to sleep. So if it's on, it's active. You have a screen that's active. You have all sorts of things going on in here. My digital SLR is a larger body. It has a larger battery, which of course gives it higher capacity, which means it will last longer. But it also does not have uh, its live view on all the time. Live view is something I only turn on when I intend to use it. As a result, uh, it does not eat through a battery like one of these does. Now, having said that, why am I ranting about batteries? Because this is my second attempt at this video. The first one died a premature death when the battery died a premature death. So, in this second attempt, let me point out some of the other more positive things that I would like to say about this camera. Uh, I mentioned in an earlier video that uh, Ted Forbes is uh, going to start a project where he wants his viewers to basically get out and take pictures and uh, follow uh, along with a number of specific assignments uh, and so on. In his introductory uh, he talked very much about how simple cameras made one think. Well, let's think for a minute. The camera videoing this right now, and this, even this camera right here, has a tremendous amount of electronics in it that, that do a lot. Uh, you can get the right exposure 95% of the time. Um, if you have an autofocus lens, you will get good autofocus and good focus probably 90% of the time. That's better than the average you would get if you were trying to set those things yourself. So let's stop worrying about them. This camera is set on aperture priority because this is a fixed aperture lens that's never going to change. It's epic. The camera will now decide the shutter speed. There is no autofocus to concern yourself with. I have set it to normal JPEGs. In other words, they're not, they're fairly compressed JPEGs. Monochrome. So they are black and white JPEGs. But I also have it set for JPEG plus RAW. So I've got all my color information in my RAW file. Now, given the simplicity of this, you might say, well, now you're just going to point, shoot, point, shoot, point. No. Quite the opposite. Now, I've eliminated all of the other concerns and brought it down to just one thing. Composition. Painting is an additive process. A painter faces a bare canvas 
and adds to it all of the elements that they want to be in that canvas. A photographer is faced with the exact opposite. Photography is a subtractive process. The photographer is faced with a scene that is basically visual chaos. And the job of the photographer is to eliminate as many of the distractions from that image as possible by careful composition. And I don't mean just putting on the fastest lens you can and blurring the background to oblivion. Okay? That is important sometimes. That is great if you're taking headshots. That has its place. But in general photography, you know, you, you don't go out and take everything completely out of its context and isolate it like that. You might want to see some of that background, but you don't want that garbage bag that was over there. So you move a little. You don't want the top of that tower sticking out of your subject's head, so you move a little. You do that till what you see on here is your painting. It's your image. You have subtracted what you didn't want. So, you can follow all the rules. You can say, well, I know rule of thirds, and I know rule of odds, and I know about leading lines, and I know about uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you do. And all of those are also important. But you have to use them. And that's the thing. Get out there, take some pictures. Follow the rules where you want to, break them where you need to. Come up with images that have some impact, not just images that are technically perfect. This is not going to give me technically perfect images. But it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to go with me almost everywhere. And hopefully, I'll have something to share from it in the weeks ahead. Well, if you enjoyed this video, click like. If you would like to see more videos like this, then click subscribe. And of course, if you have a friend who's concerned about their camera not being good enough or whatever, tell them to watch this video and then take their camera and go and take some pictures. Alright, so share. Well, folks, so long for now.